Hello and welcome again to the Hobo and His Girlfriend Wrestling Show. Well, this time it's the Hobo and His Cat Wrestling Show. Back there. My name's Hobo Tom. I thank you for watching. Today's the Raw Recap. I do apologize for this getting out late. Um, last night I had some stuff to do. And I got caught up in a couple things. But I am here. Um, programming notes. Again, I will be doing the Mix and Max Challenge tonight at 10 o'clock. Tomorrow, I'll be putting up my SmackDown video. But right now, let's focus on Raw. It was, it was an okay show. It was good. It was a good go-home show for the Super Showdown, which I'll do a review, which I'll just do a review for. I won't do a recap or watch, watch thing, live stream. I mean, like I think it comes on at 4 in the morning on Saturday. And I'm going to do some fishing right after I get this video kind of start or start the editing process for this video. Um, I will have my Lucha Underground probably on Friday, probably Friday night. And I think NXT comes back to Daytona Beach in November. And I might try and catch the December NXT in Dade City. But we'll see. It would also be nice to go back to the beautiful area. Let's talk about Raw. So Raw starts out. Um, Charlie's there in the middle of the ring. I think she was for a long time in NXT. Now she's being bumped up. I think they need a couple of fresh faces, though. She's getting kind of very robotic and stale. But Dean gives a Dean, Dean gives a good promo. I'm saying the biggest pop he got, I think, was when he said he, if he wanted to, he would just run Roman's car off the road, and the whole audience started. Was going, oh, show it to the people over there in Cultaholic. A very big Cultaholic sign out there. I'm surprised the stadium people allowed that. They're, I think the big stadium crews have their own security. I know NXT does their own little kind of goofy thing. So I just wanted to fix something. I was kind of curious about that. Then let's start it off because then Baron Corbin, again, Baron Corbin is the world's largest substitute teacher. And let's start off with a Braun Strowman versus Dean Ambrose. And it was a fun, it was a fun match. Um, Braun really just manhandles Dean for the most of the match. Um, Dean finally gets smart. He stops doing crazy stuff. He goes after the legs of Braun Strowman, which makes sense for being the bigger opponent. Uh, Dean does know how to do that suicide dive, though. Brie Bella needs to take some notes from him, especially from Total Divas. And I don't watch Total Divas. That's nonsense. It's an hour long of drama. Whereas The Miz and Maurice was like a half hour just fun. They're just a great couple. Well, again, this was a this was a fun match. This was a cheeseburger match. I mean, the only reason it was a cheeseburger match is because we had a death there finish, baby. Nobody wins. Well, Braun wins, because only in the WWE do you win in a death finish, baby. Because Roman Reigns eventually intervenes when, when Braun just starts to beat up Dean a lot. Then Seth comes in. And Braun smartly leaves the ring again, three on one. Braun's not, Braun's not a dummy. It was a good match. Then you have Roman, then Baron Corbin said, eh, 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 eh. So we had Reigns versus Dolph Ziggler since Roman Reigns was already in the ring. And Dolph is really the faster of the two. Roman just gets booed. Dolph gets cheered. Um, the, the famous shirt, that, for some reason, that that looks really awkward when Dolph does it. Maybe he's not tall enough, or maybe, maybe Roman is too tall. Um, but the, the, that famous her did not get the pin. Did get a two sweet. Um, Dolph is really he really likes that sleeper hold. 
The only one that used it to really great efficiency was Bruce the Barber Beefcake, where he would just put people to sleep and then give them a free haircut. He'd probably go into the match and be like, hey, listen, I need a little off the side. Can you just take care of him? I'll, I'll do the job. I just need a little off the side. And back in the day when they did job, it was just like, listen, I'm getting 50 bucks for showing up here. I know we're scheduled for a match you're going over. If you could just, just kind of neaten it up along, along the years, square off the back. He uses that pretty extensively. I know, I want to say, Suzuki. Is it Minoru Suzuki? Or did Shibata used to use it? But it was a setup. So once they started to fade and go down to like one knee, then he just kick him in the head. So, but this is just, I don't know, it's just a jumping wrestled. And again, this was really another fun, good match. Again, a cheeseburger match. Um, Dolph definitely gets the worst of any wrestling match, and he's in between with the Dogs of War. Dolph is definitely the weakest of the three. Then we had a Riot Squad promo. I mean, they they read their lines. They're not giving anything great or creative. So yeah, we like we like breaking glass. It makes us feel good. Okay. Oh, Liv Morgan dyed her hair. Pink now. And she did show up to ringside, which is good for her. The Bell Twins showed up. I figure if they got booed or not. But Nikki does that little hip wiggle. There were rumors, and just rumors, that she was working. She like had like a one-night stint in a Tampa strip club, which I think makes sense. It does follow the timeline of her breakup with John Cena. Again, I think she was still living in this small mansion. I think my house is the size of his guest house. But there's that. She does, she does that hip wiggle very naturally, though. A little too naturally. Even practice. But then, um, for the most part, Ronda Rousey came out. And then she had a match versus Ruby Riot of the Riot Squad. And Liv just kind of dyed her hair pink. Ruby Riot is a good wrestler. She was actually... This was actually a good match for Ronda. Because of the fact that Ruby Riot was shown she can out-wrestle Ronda Rousey. When it came to strikes and submissions, oh no, and, and, and like judo throws in like a like real mixed martial arts, jiu jitsu, um, judo stuff, Ron Ronda Rousey's the best. But when it comes to the wrestling aspects, Ruby Riot has it. The only thing that ever made me upset about Ruby Riot is that she refused to admit she was Heidi Lovelace. What can you say? Whereas Kai Sono, who in interviews, when you see him in real life, I know he's still in character at shows, but he just seems to be such a good, decent individual. He spends time, talks with fans. He acknowledges that, yeah, I was, I was, I was Chris here. I was like, well, thanks for remembering me. That's awesome. Gives a little elbow pump. I'm like, dude, I, I, I don't know. There is something when the wrestlers become a little bit more relatable. It just makes it a little bit special. Again, this match, again, as long as Ruby Riot was wrestling, she had the upper hand. As you know, it's a ring generalship. She knows how to use the ropes. Um, for some reason, Ronda wasn't taking this seriously because she still had a shirt on. You know, that, And then eventually, though, the shirt did get ripped off, like a la Hulk style. And, it, I mean, this was a really good match, though. Again, when it came down to the wrestling, Ruby Riot was always on top. When it came down just to strikes and, and, and really throws, Ronda Rousey. And then, of course, you have had the arm breaker, which I think is more like a bicep cutter, the way she uses it. It probably protects them a little bit more. They, she doesn't 
try to hyperextend the elbow or shoulder cap. Kind of does a little cutter action where she does bend it, but really kind of protects, which is good. Again, this was a good quality cheeseburger match. I mean, there was no interference from the outside. It is what it was. It was good. It was enjoyable. I was shocked that they had Bobby Roode beer money. They're remaking beer money with Chad Gable versus Connor. This is Connor's second win. Um, Roode, I think they're showing a little bit of his, his NXT tactical skills where he knows the ring and he knows how to use the ring. He wrestled smarter. Connor was just way too powerful for him, though. And again, because of that, I mean, Rude was able to use the ring to his advantage. He knew when to get on the top rope. He knew when to use the ropes for leverage to get his feet up when Connor came charging into him. And again, this was another good, fun cheeseburger match. I mean, there's nothing special involved. It was good, though. Um, it did end when Gable got up on the ring post, and I don't know where Victor came from. But Victor, like, flew and took out Gable. That was enough to distract Bobby Roode. Connor did his kind of finisher. I forget what's... This is like a big end-of-man thing, I think it's was called. Like a power bomb body slam. I don't know. Power bomb face first. I think it's gets him up in power bomb and I don't know. It's 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 okay. But Connor gets the victory over the glorious Bobby Roode. I hope this leads to a heel Bobby Roode. Because heel Bobby Roode is still best Bobby Roode. Besides beer money Bobby Roode. Then you have the B team versus the Revival. The Revival are really good. I mean, they're, they're a quality tag team. I don't know why they're, they're in a feud with the B team. The B team's a comedy routine. I guess Revival's trying to expand what they're doing. Again, very classic wrestling tag team acumen by both teams. Uh, really more so by the Revival. B team of Chris Axel and then Chris Axel's still a son. Of Mr. Perfect, and he does again all, all his dad's moves. Again, I'm probably an amazing teacher. And got things drilled into him. Uh, this was a ham sandwich match. And really, it was just another goofy win. It was a weird win by the B team. Then the Authors of Pain showed up, super clad the B team. Now that the Authors of Pain have gone through jobbers, they had a really good showing against the Shield along with Baron Corbin. Now they're taking on kind of the, the upper level jobbers, the, the, the known people. And it was, it was okay. It was not great. And I think you're, if you're fed so much of the B team versus the Revival, the same team or the same individuals over and over and over and over again gets old. And of course, we have the fuzzy warm moment with the breast cancer survivors. When actually, by now, I was shocked because actually it had a pretty good taste to it, which is rare. Um, you had Seth Rollins versus Drew McIntyre. Ooh, there were some stiff slaps. I know slaps don't hurt that much, but it's like, ooh, especially by Drew. I think those days from WCPW um, and NXT are coming through, because in NXT, they do kind of work kind of stiff. Again, they do protect each other, but when they just give slaps and chops, they're like, <laughs> and anything clubbing where... If you've ever been hit by a clubbing blow before, it 
doesn't it it, it hurts, but it's it's not gonna it's not it hurts you. It hurts, but it's not gonna injure you. That's probably the best way. To say it. it hurts, but it's not but it's not gonna lead to any injury, even if you didn't screw it up. And if you do it right, it makes such a fud. Like if you ever get just a forearm to the back and the guy does it right and leaves his palm open, oh, it, it stings. It hurts, but you have to smile because it gives such a satisfying fud. Again, you hit anyone with a form again in the chest or the back. Yeah, it's it hurts. It's not going to injure them, and the sound effects it makes. Oh, great! Again, Oni Lorcan's chops, almost his open hand chest slaps, Pentagon Dark's chest slap. Walter's chops. Ooh. The double chop by Keith Lee. Again, they I think they know it's not going to injure the guy, though even if they miss a little bit. Unlike kicks and like kicks are supposed to be near the head. Always ew. always look kind of interesting. Or any kind of driver thing. So so they know I can do this a little with a little bit extra mustard on it. Again, Seth is the much quicker of the two. Drew is, is really the brute techniques. Again, really clubbing blows by brute. Brute, brute clubs by Drew. Pretty what I just said. I mean, they did have that one apron spot where I thought he was going to tease it on the steps. On the steps would have been good. Apron spots used to be reserved for really special moments. Now it's like every time. Oh, this is the hardest part of the apron. The stiffest part. Only because it just doesn't... ring doesn't bounce up and down as much there. It's cool. And you actually see like the... Big... Like, for the most part, it looks like a... Truck spring. In like the middle of the... Kind of cool. So the middle of the ring always has the most bounce. Yeah, it just doesn't bounce as much. Still has the same amount of padding. But, yeah, this this was, again, another fun... This was probably the best match of the three. But, but still, it's really just a cheeseburger match. What's rolling? Oh, my cat just walked in. She's meowing. She wants to go outside because she knows I have my fishing gear ready because right after this video, probably in about five minutes or so, I'm, I'm off fishing. As long as the video gets... I mean, this was like the best quality cheeseburger match. This is if you put a slice or two of bacon on it. Um, again, Dolph runs in, then Reigns, then Braun, then Dean. And, and it's just a mall. So unfortunately, and you and actually the other thing is that probably on Thursday you'll get my super showdown predictions, and I probably won't do the card. I I might do a reaction. See how that goes. The next match we have Elias and Kevin Owens. <sighs> Kevin Owens is such a good heel, so perfect for the heel row. He he runs he runs down Seattle, talks about how the Sonic's left. Oh, did the crowd not like that? They were booing him. I'll say be it was a they were just solid chorus of boos. It wasn't one or two boos. It was the entire stadium was booing him for five to ten minutes. Oh, they were vicious. They let him know what they thought. Boo! Boo! You stink! Boo! Boo! Kevin Owens had a problem, even with the mic, of trying to talk over the crowd. And he kept on talking, which is great. A lot of performers would have would have, would have taken it in. Kevin Owens like, no, I'm going to do more. I'm going to make them hate me even more. Oh, it was so good. Elias is like, you know what? We've, we've had enough. Turn these lights off. I don't want to see these people. Oh, they're so good together. This led to a Bobby Lashley versus KO match. 
Again, Lashley's just so much stronger. Kevin Owens is a master of the headlock. Again, kind of in that thing, Kevin Owens is a better wrestler. And when it came down really just the wrestling technique, Kevin Owens is so good. Bobby Lashley, if you want to go you want to go toe to toe with Bobby Lashley, eh, eh, not happening. I mean, you want to try power move after power move against Bobby Lashley, it ain't happening. But Kevin Owens, when, when he was smart, used his wrestling ability. I mean, this was really good. I mean, smart. I mean, he knows how to use the ring. He knows again. He has that ring generalship. Oh, I'll just throw him into the ring post. Oh, he's going to come charging. Ole, boom, right into the ring post. Oh, I'll just stuck over here. He's going to run into the ring post again. I'll throw him to the steps. I'll bang his head against the steps. Bang his head against the apron. All those things that aren't going to get you disqualified, but are definitely heel tactics. Kevin was so good at that. Yeah, this was a, this was another fun match. It was a cheeseburger match. And mainly because then uh, Leo Rush got involved. Um, again, he caused a distraction. He was going, he was like doing circles around around Elias. And eventually, they did get their hands on, on Leo Rush. And at one moment, Leo Rush, oh no, they didn't get their hands on him. Um, he went up on the top rope. Leo Rush went on the top rope because then, again, it was a death finish, baby. Nobody wins. But yeah, that was fun, though. It told the story. I mean, Leo Rush tried to jump off the top rope to save Bobby Lashley. Elias is like, wadded him away. <laughs> that fall looked rough, too. And then we had our final match. It was Bailey with Finn Balor versus Alicia Fox. Alicia Fox, she starts off fast. Um, Bailey starts to channel Finn Balor. Again, they had a little bit of history in NXT where where Finn had, had knee problems, and I think guess Bailey, just to make him feel better, came out, did his whole entrance for him. They had a little history. And I mean, it was an okay match. I mean I mean Fox is a good wrestler. She she just has long legs. Couldn't believe how long her legs were. Even Bailey, I want to say the two are roughly the same height, but Bailey just seems shorter. Bailey is like, I mean, I know it probably sounds bad, but like normal proportions. Alicia Fox is just lanky looking for some reason. Best way I can put it. Um, it was a, it was an, it was an okay match. Again, the, I don't like the Bailey to belly suplex because so many people do so much more impressive stuff. More impressive belly to belly suplexes that don't that don't get him the win. I mean, again, this more so for the mix max challenge. It was a ham sandwich. It was okay. Bailey again picked up the win. It was fun. I'm like. Looking at the clock, I'm like, this is the main event? You know, then um, the Heartbreak Kid comes out, cuts a promo, Undertaker comes out, Kane comes out, Triple H comes out. Oh, sorry about that, cheese paw. But Triple H is going over at, where she goes right now, at the Super Showdown. He ate the tombs. He ate a choke slam. He ate a tombstone pile driver. Blaze is winning. Again, I'll give, I'll give out my predictions. Probably with my girlfriend on the phone. Thursday? Maybe Thursday night? Thursday night, Friday morning, Wednesday night. Sometime around there. And I would like to thank everyone for watching. Please like, share, comment, and